So uh, I want to welcome you to uh, the dissertation defense for Ambrosio Valencia Romero. Um, I'm Paul Grogan. I'm the chair of, of Ambrosio's uh, 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 PhD committee, and I'm joined by um, uh, Dr. Hoffinson uh, who, from the School of Systems and Enterprises, Dr. Bayrock from the School of Systems and Enterprises, and Dr. Suchow from the School of Business, um, all here at Stevens. I'm really happy to see uh, a lot of familiar faces in the audience today. Um, uh, really excited for Ambrosio to share um, his work that he's uh, contributed over his time here at Stevens. Uh, let me just give a little bit of background on Ambrosio. Um, he, he, has a, he, he received his bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the Uni Universidad del Atlantico in Barranquilla, Colombia, uh, where he, uh, he hails from. Um, he also uh, has a master's degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Puerto Rico at Mayaguez. And I see Dr. Lugo online. Uh, welcome. So Dr. Lugo is Ambrosio's master's advisor. Um, Ambrosio uh, I, I, I has uh, joined the systems engineering program here at Stevens. Um, I looked back through our records and Ambrosio, the first time we talked was in late April, 2016. Um, and still your, your application was one of, I think the only application I've seen from a student interested in systems engineering who has experience in running human behavioral studies. Um, so, so you've uh, taken that and thrived with that during your PhD program. Um, I don't want to spoil the story of what Ambrosio will share with everyone today. Um, uh, so he has a lot of uh, interesting work uh, to talk about that blends game theory with design research to understand um, how uh, stra strategic dynamics, strategy dynamics influence uh, design decision making. Uh, before we get into the presentation, let me just give a couple of notes. Um, Ambrosio will, on format, Ambrosio will present for about 40 minutes um, on, his, on his research. Um, uh, he would like to record the presentation. Um, uh, so, and I believe that the recording is uh, happening now. Um, after the presentation, we'll move into a Q&A period. And I'll ask that we um, pause the recording for the Q&A period. Uh, the Q&A period will start with questions uh, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from the, the committee and then uh, open up for also for questions from the, from the public. Um, after the Q&A period, uh, we'll trans the committee will, uh, will go to a breakout room uh, to deliberate on the outcome of the, of the defense. And then we'll come back to this main room and uh, communicate the decision um, to Ambrosio. So with that, um, Ambrosio, I'll let you take it away. And uh, we're very eager to hear about your research. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Grogan. Thank you so much for, for the opportunity. Uh, thank you uh, to the committee for being here and thank you to the, to the audience. I welcome you to my dissertation defense, strategy dynamics in collective system design. Let's start with talking about the overview of this presentation. I will follow the same structure of the chapters of my dissertation one to seven, starting with an overview of collective system design, a strategy dynamics, by a bi-level model of decision-making and bi-level parameter design tasks, the collective design experiment, strategy dynamics at large and the harmony index, an application case that, is, that involves data sharing paradigms in an aircraft design problem, and some recommendations for future work. So let, collective system design. So when I, when I talk about collective systems design, I'm actually talking about design of engineering systems. These are large scale, they involve a lot, a lot of disciplines, a lot of information sharing equals a lot of work to do. And you can see them in, in, in two ways. You, you can uh, uh, consider a design of an engineering system that uh, has only one organization with authority. So here the, the challenge is understanding if one organization is capable to manage this process alone. And also if one organization can scale it. So that's why, because of these are challenges and because of the, of the a large scope that these engineering systems uh, achieve through time, the approach is usually to involve many organizations uh, which will, will share authority. So the expect expectations is uh, that the process will be more efficient. And but there is also the question that is it more or less robust? This second scenario is what I refer uh, to as collective design involving multiple independent participating design actors. 
it is they are diverse actors. They might be distributed geographically, uh, and they have to collaborate. And, and there are also elements of demo, of democratic decision making in these processes. So the first question, which is a question with a large, very large scope, is what drives collective design? And of course, this is a very difficult question to answer. More specifically, what drives good collective design decisions? Now let's think about collaboration as a collective strategy. And I will put this, I will give you this example of uh, two individual strategies. One of them is working alone on a project, let's call it A, and a strategy B is cooperating with another design actor. First context, you and an external colleague is the other actor. Context two, you and a coworker. So, this is a table that will show your utility, which is a measure of your preferences for the combinations of these individual strategies. And you can hypothesize that in an external in an scenario when you are working with an external colleague, your highest preference will be that both of you cooperate. It, here we can express this as a maximum of utility of 100 units. And this difference will be the difference between working alone and cooperating, depending on what the colleague, the other colleague does. So for example, the first difference is 25 because it's 25 minus zero. The other one is minus 25 because it's 75 minus 100. Now in the second scenario, things might change a little. And this is related to how the incentives, how your beliefs about, and your expectations about what the others are doing changes depending on the organization, depending on a lot of, of the process itself. So in a scenario when it's you and a co-worker, maybe your, your maximum utility is achieved when you work alone and the other co-worker is putting all uh, extra effort. And uh, yes, cooperating, both of you cooperating is still a good uh, a alternative, but there is an incentive for uh, defecting from cooperation in these scenarios. So... Imagine how these dynamics manifest in a complex design process like that of an aircraft. And more importantly, my motivation question in this work is how do the strategic components of a design problem affect collective action? So what strategic components I'm considering, these are the ones that I call strategy dynamics based on the literature. And what are these strategy dynamics? In a nutshell, they are based on, the, on that difference value that we have on the first column for example, uh, one, uh, one of the measure is, measures is structural fear, which is the difference in utility be be between strategies A to B when others remain at A. And the other factor is structural grid, which is the difference in utility between strategies A to B when others also deviate to B. That is when others cooperate in this scenario. They form the basis of the strategy dynamics. And this brings me to the specific research objectives of my work which are first, the modeling of strategy dynamics in collective design problems. Related to one research question, which is how can strategy dynamics be characterized as a phenomenon in a design problem? Specifically, how is it different from optimization? Second observation of the effect of strategy dynamics on design behaviors and performance. One associated research question, how do strategy dynamics affect strategy selection, collective efficiency, and equality in design tasks? Finally, the last specific research objective is an application study on the emergence of strategy dynamics in the design of a complex system. Uh, specifically, the adoption of a data sharing paradigm in an aircraft design problem. There are two research questions. The first one is what strategies characterize the transition between a peer-to-peer -peer in a centralized system and how does allocation of costs and surpluses impact strategy dynamics? What are strategy dynamics? So, Formally, you can think of them as combinations of low and high levels of the structural fear and grid factors that I showed on, on the third slide that result in different rational equilibria conditions. Equilibria here measure as Nash equilibria, the equilibrium concept by Nash. So this equilibria, what it means is that what it's supposed to be economically rational. Usually you use a normal form game representation, which is the same table I showed at the beginning. And you just put, uh, a, you assign what is your strategy A, what is your strategy B, and you start to assess the utility that you get from each combination 
of strategies. If we plot that on a coordinate system with a, a vertical axis for fear or horizontal axis for greed and high and low levels of each of them, we can define a different regions. The first one, for example, with high greed and high fear is called defection. And in this region, strategy A is the only equilibrium. So imagining that example, example I showed before, working alone would be the most rational outcome in this uh, domain. Another domain, biostability. Both AA and BB are equilibria. Coexistence, AB and BA are equilibria. And finally, harmony is where a strategy B is the only equilibrium. That is, if this was the case I showed before, cooperating will be the rational option. And you can imagine that we want to achieve a harmony. That would be the ideal scenario. So going back to the first research question, how can this dynamics be characterized? For that, I use a bilevel model of collective system design based on work by uh, Dr. Grog and Dr. Bayrak, mapping lower level design decisions through uh, two upper level strategic decisions. Now, the higher the level of decision-making, the larger the time scale and the uncertainty. What are lower level decisions in my model? They, are, they could be a static or operational decisions under a strategy-specific strategy context. For example, changing the diameter of a covering wheel choosing an optimization method, or sharing design information. All of these are decisions that happen in a specific context. Meanwhile, upper level strategic decisions are, in my model, collective strategic decisions with irreversible impact on the scope. And this is very important. These are one-shot decisions made early in the, in the process, but have a mostly an irreversible impact on, on, on the uh, long term, some decisions uh, that uh, fall on the, this category are, for example, community resources, adopting the same te technology, teaming up, and or deciding who's the leader and who follows in a decision decision making process. For doing that, visually, how can we? Uh, how can I, I express this? Imagine we have these two value spaces which show low and high value values of design value and, uh, within a specific context, a specific strategic context. So you can imagine that you know the context, you, you try, you know the context, you try to maximize value in that context and you can map them to a normal form game. Now, how does that apply for my first contribution, which is the modeling of this strategy dynamics? For that, I propose an abstract by level parameter design task. This is a representation of this task. And you have a, bo uh, two actors. Each of them has a, an interface with two value spaces partially, uh, uh, partially uh, shown with, uh, with the values. One actor has a selection of a strategy in, this, in design decision, as well as the other, actors, the other actor on the horizontal axis. And these decisions are reflected on the op vertical axis of the other act mapped from zero to 100 in, in the color scale. So what you're looking at uh, uh, on each box is basically two lotteries, lottery A and lottery B. And this is essentially the same normal form game. You are choosing a strategy A, but you don't know what the other actor could do if choosing A or B. And similarly for B. What is in the background of that interface is the those two values, the values where, that, uh, where the actors agree on the same strategy. But what is uh, calculating the background is the values of A, B, and B, A, the, those utilities, based on the equations of greed and fear that, that, that I, I showed previously. So what you need to do here is just, well, you, if you have the values of A, A, and B, B, from the value, mass, you, uh, value maps, you just assign low and high levels of fear and greed, and then just solve for A, B, and B, A. And this constitutes my first contribu contribution. The plan that I had for this abstract by level task was to use it in a collective design experiment. So the question that I, I wanted to answer with this experiment was how this strategy dynamics affect strategy selection, strategy selection, collective efficiency, and equality. 
of course, uh, we ran uh, uh, several sessions. I used a factorial, factorial design with two levels of speed and two levels of grid. These are the, la the values that I use uh, a third for low and, and high. It was a round robin task, all play, all sessions with four subjects, 10 sessions in total. There were 12 synthetic, synthetic tasks to complete the, the factorial design, three per strategy dynamic, 50 minutes, uh, uh, it lasted 50 minutes, and the participants were STEM students and graduates. For participating, they were given gift cards. So from that experiment, what, I, what, can, uh, what can I say about the effect of fit and grid on strategy selection? So I'm gonna plot here, I'm gonna show a, a table of the outcomes for selection of collective strategy AA, the second one, an anti-coordination AB or BA, and the third one, a collective strategy BB. And for reference, I put, I put the coordinate system of a strategy dynamical domains on the right. So what happened in, the, in this experiment? So for Harmony, for example, 81% of, of the, of the 80, almost 82% of, of the participants chose to cooperate on, the stra on strategy B. Remember that in harmony dynamics, strategy B is the only equilibrium. So if I were to base my expectations on the Nash equilibrium outcome, the expected would have been 100% of people cooperating. So this is not bad considering that a lot of things could happen, maybe miscommunications and uh, things like that, because they, were, they, they, were, they had verbal communication, but the participants came from a different uh, by, background and they ha have a variety of personalities, of course. By stability, 78% of the, of the participants chose to, co to cooperate with the strategy BB. Now, the expected here was 50-50 for either AA or BB, if I base my assumptions on the national equilibrium. Coexistence, 62% anti-coordinated. -co the expected is actually 100% in anti-coordination. So this is fair, uh, a fair result. But the fiction, the, not surprising if we looked at behavioral game theory literature, but surprising if we were to base all of our assumptions on the Nash equilibrium. The expected was 0%. Like rationally, people were not, was not, suppo people were not supposed to cooperate in this, uh, uh, under this dynamics. Now let's look at the effect on collective efficiency and equality. So I, I did, uh, the, the way I measure collective efficiency and equality was by using percentile ranks of a measure of efficiency based on the generalized Nash product of actor final utilities. This is just the square root of the, of the final utilities of the actors mapped, to, from, uh, mapped from zero to, to one. For example, if actor one gets 50 at the end of the, of the task and actor two gets 100, combine 150, the efficiency will be a square root of 5,000, 71. If both obtain 75, or, though, the efficiency will be 75. Now, in terms of equality, is, uh, I measured it as the as absolute difference between final utilities, uh, here uh, also mapped to zero uh, and one, between zero and one. Same example, if uh, actor one gets 50 and the other one gets 100, the equality will be 0.5. But if both obtain 75, the equality will be. Yeah. So you can see that maximizing efficiency and maximizing equality have elements of increasing fairness. They are not ex an exact measure of fairness or, or performance, but good, good enough to, to at least uh, create, a, a generate some hypothesis for future work. So the results, I used uh, an ordinal logic model, cumulative logic model specifically. The effect of fear uh, uh, on efficiency inequality, moderate negative effect on efficiency, it was significant. Moderate positive effect on equality, but there, was, uh, uh, there wasn't enough evidence to claim this result. For grid, both, uh, uh, for, uh, for both efficiency and equality, uh, a, cons a considerable negative effect on both uh, collective uh, performance metrics. Now, summary of results from this experiment. Well, 
going back to the contribution, which is observation of the, of the, of the effect of, dynam of this dynamics on performance, I can say that the normative predictions on, of strategic behavior were not accurate based on the Nash equilibrium concept. So evidence of cooperative behavior on the defection dynamics similar to what is seen in the literature, behavioral uh, economics literature, the expected was none. Coordination of mutual beneficial actions on the bias stability more frequent than expected as well. An overall significant ne negative effect of a structural grid on collective performance, a significant impact on efficiency, consistent with also with background, considerable negative effect on equality. And in the case of fear, it had a negative effect on efficiency, but there is insufficient evidence of such an effect on, on, on equality. My hypothesis here is that face-to-face -face and verbal communication between participants in the experiment could have helped mitigate this effect. What if this experiment was run instead of having verbal communication, having chat messages, or having a ge geographically distributed actors that do, that do not communicate as often only after a certain number of iterations? So this is a, a hint for, for potential future work. Now, uh, strategy dynamics at large, I want to talk about this uh, because so far the, the literature on strategy dynamics is limited to two actors and the incentives are usually assumed symmetric. Very simple models and, and very useful, uh, but, but still they don't reflect what happens in real world, where many, many in this, uh, particularly in, this, in design uh, engineering, many actors there are so many actors and they have varying incentives and beliefs. Consider three actors for, for, uh, for this example. The actors are you, Jane, and John. And the strategies, same as before, working alone or cooperating. So again, your utility, I will show the, the outcomes and the differences. So you could group Jane and John as, a, as one that agree on uh, choosing A or, or choosing B. And you can expect or hypothesize, and of course, this is based on your beliefs or your incentives, that the best outcome for you is that everybody cooperates. But again, what if Jane always worked alone? What would happen? Things could change radically because maybe your expectations about the, the, the effect of John's work on your performance are lower. So maybe for you, it's better that you work alone and John keeps cooperating, keeps committing resources for, for, uh, for cooperation. Now, let's, this is only the, uh, two sub games, right? So let's use that coordinate system again of a study dynamics to plot what could happen in terms of fear and greed. And remember that fear is the first column here grid will be the second column. So now for the first sub game, you see that that game, if you, if you were to believe that Jane and John are always agreeing on the same strategy, the game you see is a biostability dynamics uh, uh, game. But for the other case, if you thought that Jane doesn't want, doesn't want to cooperate, just, she just wants to work alone, your game is falling on defection dynamics. So you see that it, it all depends, like how you see the process, how you see these incentives. And we can, keep, keep, we can uh, keep going. Like what if Jane always cooperated? Then it might be harmony dynamics. What if John always worked alone and, J and, and, the, and your uncertainty was about Jane's action? It could be, by stability again, and then again. And then you see that Jane and John could also have similar views of reality. So their incentives also will vary, their beliefs also will vary because they are just different. This is the way it is. And uh, here the situation is that now we can not know for sure, or well, we can know it, but we don't know what could happen because maybe the number of equilibria can be zero, which it is, which is, we cannot apply uh, rational economics to, to, to predict an outcome, 
or maybe the number of equilibria is so high that it becomes unmanageable. And right now, there is not even a, a theory to choose an equilibria among many of them. So the thing is that we, the only thing we want is that everything fall on everything fell on strategy on the harmony dynamics. It might not be possible, but we can try to do it uh, to to achieve it as much as as we can. For doing that, first we we, we need to understand uh, because this is so much information so far, and we need to simplify this. The way I propose to simplify this is by introducing the harmony index, which is it's a simple measure. It's just the ha half the negative average of the sum of a circular field and grid across all the sub games. Let's go back to the same game, you, Jane, and John working alone or cooperating. Again, we, we know this and we, we are try, we're, we're, let's try to compute your harmony index here. So first compute the average fields, which is just the average of those first column uh, differences. Then compute your average grid, and then just take. Uh, uh, by the way, you can plot it on the on the same uh, coordinate system to see what uh, it could be on average, and then just sum them, negate them, and divide by two. Here, the harmony index will be minus six. Where does that fall if we plotted contours of the harmony index on the same co coordinate system? So, well, the main di diagonal will be zero, and that other diagonal, which is if, uh, um, approaching defection will be a harmony index below zero for you. Harmony index uh, larger than zero will fall with uh, half of the regions of biostability, coexistence, and the entire region of, har of harmony dynamics. So this is a good start to try to understand what could happen in the design process. Now let's apply it to the adoption of data sharing paradigms in a multidisciplinary a, a systems design process. What I'm going to use uh, for this application case is a surrogate aircraft design problem that has four design offices, that is four design actors. Each of them manages three parameters. These actors are fuselage, payload, proportion, and airfoil. Two lower level decisions using simulated agents. These decisions, uh, the, the one that I highlight, I, are local search and information exchange. And there are six system level requirements that must be met. So we can go from that uh, ugly air, uh, airplane aircraft on the left to the one on the right that looks uh, uh, like a normal aircraft. This is what, based on work by Tekken and, and, and Grogan. This application case tries to answer two questions. The first one, what is the dynamics characterize transition between peer-to-peer -peer and centralized system, and how does allocation of costs and surpluses impact strategy dynamics? Schematically, how does that look like? Fully peer-to-peer, -peer, imagine this would be the network of peer-to-peer -peer data sharing, where the nodes, which are the design offices, exchange information between each other at a one, one uh, link at a time. And then, they submit information for system level synthesis, and that synthesis is a one way road. But in a fully centralized data sharing paradigm, instead of exchanging information between themselves, they will put information in a, data, a central data repository and they will pull information from it. So this central data repository works as, a, as the uh, source of truth model, and uh, a, in the information the quality of information, the flow of information is expected to increase a lot. So we would like to achieve this fully centralized scenario. This is our desired outcome. So I, that's why I put uh, that fully centralized as, a, as the strategy B, the one that will be related to harmony. But there are other scenarios like unilateral defection. Uh, for example, uh, one Design office might decide not to chip in for, for this adoption of the central data repository. And but, but might still benefit from it. You, know, we, you don't know. I mean, it can, it can depend also on the incentive structure, but you can see that this is also a possibility. And another possibility is a coordination failure when there is one a, a office or two that are pushing for this adoption, but the others don't feel like it and won't contribute to it. So 
all the effort, all the cost paid for this transition is not uh, taking effect and the performance is the same one as, the, as in the poly peer-to-peer -peer case. Now for the lower level decisions, again, a, a, a local search and information exchange, uh, I use simulated uh, agents for, for uh, uh, simulating, uh, computational agents for simulating this decision, uh, these decisions and consider these two design offices, fuselage and payload. So this will be a copy that fuselage owns the current, this about uh, the status of the design. It could look like this. This could be our baseline and scenario. And this current design knowledge, knowledge has four pieces, one piece for each actor. That's what fuselage know about uh, itself and about the other uh, uh, the disciplines, disciplines. So how local search works? Well, fuselage will try to improve that design by, by themselves, but uh, by, by increasing the value, the design value of that design, just to achieve a nicer aircraft. And it's just iterating across their uh, design parameters. And a similar thing is going on uh, in the payload office. They have a current uh, design knowledge and they start to perform local search operations. Now, in terms of information exchange, and this is where the strategic decisions have an, a, a bigger impact. Imagine in terms of information exchange, fuselage in that it chose to, st to stick with peer-to-peer -peer data sharing paradigm. How it works for, for, for them? Well, they will exchange information directly with another office, like in this case with payload. So they will send the information to payload and they will receive some information back from payload. But what if payload chose the centralized data sharing? Well, there is a central data repository for them. They will send the information to the repository and they will receive the up-to-date copies that were submitted to the central data repository to inform their current design knowledge and then perform a better local search. Now, for measuring the operational value and strategic utility, this is important for answering these questions. The design value would be is based on the achievement of system level requirements. The, I don't put the exact equation here, but it's basically it's based on on the geometric mean of the error across all iterations. Just for reference, this equation was based on work by Thekinin and Grogan, and for these two ge geometries, the error in one will be almost one, while the other the error on the other one will be a, a global minimum. Individual utility uh, uh, is measured as a fraction of the surplus of the devi of deviating from A minus its cost. So here is just uh, the share, your share of the surplus minus that cost. And the assumptions I put for, for I uh, assign here is that the cost of selecting the peer-to-peer -peer data sharing paradigm is always zero. That is, a, I mean, there's no gains or not surplus from, from staying at, with peer-to-peer, -peer, things can continue the same way. And the cost of selecting the peer-to-peer -peer data sharing paradigm is variable. This is needed to answer research question 3B. For the assumptions, the assumptions and results from this experiment, in terms of the, the, the experiment, what the assumptions are, is that I only focus on six strategic contexts. Here, I only simulated fully peer-to-peer, -peer, fully centralized, and the unilateral defections. For the coordination failures, I assume the, the, the utilities are equal to the utility, to the value from peer-to-peer, -peer, fully peer-to-peer, -peer, minus the cost that the actors that chose uh, the transition paid. The design space of each of the design offices is limited to four to five alternatives per variable. This is still quite large. Uh, five to the third power for some uh, design offices. A batch simulation execution with 80 samples, four iterations per sample. And this is the results for mean operational value. Here, to simplify by the last iteration, which I, I assume is the end of the design process, fully centralized has higher operational value than, than fully peer-to-peer. For the Unilateral defections, the 
defection by propulsion actually produces more operational value than the fully uh, uh, centralized scenario. While, for example, the payload uh, produces the lowest operational value in this scenario. The baseline incentive structure that we use, that is how this surplus is split among the actors, is that the, the, they are split evenly only among centralized system adapters. Only those who pay the, pay the cost for the transition uh, will be rewarded with, with, uh, with the surplus. So for example, for if, I, if the surplus was based on achieving a fully centralized uh, uh, scenario, it would be in this case 75 minus 68 over four because there are four actors adopting uh, in this case uh, centralized and it will be 1.75, the utility. For the other case, let's take for example, the gains for the a scenario of defection by propulsion. Only one, two and four will benefit. So propulsion, even though the absence maximizes operational value, they are not rewarded because they didn't pay the cost for that transition. And, and, and you can think that it, not necessar it doesn't necessarily mean that proportion is, is that key because maybe it's just that combination of uh, who does what that creates this value. So here the value will be 70, 77 minus 68 over, over three, three units of utility for each actor. For cost allocation, I used a, I proposed a, a process that co I call harmonize, harmonization of cost allocation, which is assigning individual cost transactions that equate all harmony indices. This is done by a mean max uh, decision rule and harmonize surplus division, which is dividing the surplus also in a way that equates these harmony indices. The results of the emergence of strategy dynamics based on this baseline incentive structure, we can plot them on this coordinate system of, of fit and grid. And you can see that most of them seem to fall on the harmony dynamics a, a region, which is the lower left. But you still see that there are some points of fit and grid that are falling on biostability and other ones that are between defection and coexistence. This will be the harmony indices here. And you can see that payload, which had the lowest operational value, has also the highest harmony index. And this makes sense because payload will be the one that will benefit the most from the adoption of centralized data sharing. Payload doesn't want to be uh, alone. Here, if we compute the Nash equilibria, there are six and that one of them includes the, the fully centralized. But still, since there are so many, we cannot uh, predict very well if this would be the case, if this would, could happen in reality. What about if we play with allocation of costs and surpluses? Now, by the process I, pro I, pro I proposed in my dissertation, and I mean, you, you can see, if you see my dissertation, you will find more details about it. The harmonized cost allocation, now you see that these convex holes are very similar in the I harmonize the, I mean, the harmony indices are the same by this process. The good thing about this process is that it achieves only one equilibrium that happened to be the fully centralized scenario. So this is a very interesting result, which could be taken further for mechanism design. Like, like cost allocation seems to have a significant effect on the emergence of favorable strategy dynamics. What about harmonized surplus division? And, and surplus division is a thing that has going on on cooperative game theory since its inception. Like everybody does surplus division. Well, no, I, I shouldn't say everybody, most of them do it. So again, harmonized uh, uh, indices, but look at this. Only the fully centralized equilibrium disappeared from this result. And, all, and the five equilibria left don't really work for, for, the, for that adoption, that transition to fully centralized. So, I mean, it, it, of course it depends on, this, on the scenario. Maybe it's for this scenario, maybe it's for the baseline incentive structure that I used. But this is very interesting because we, are, we tend to think that surplus division uh, alone could be 
efficient and could be fair. But if we try to apply non-cooperative game theory to, uh, to this uh, example, you see, you see that actually what we want to achieve is not, it's not, a, a, it's not happening. Like that equilibrium that we want is disappearing. So summary of results from this application study. First, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I would like to state the contribution again, which is the study of the emergence of study dynamics on complex engineering systems design. Based on the research question 3A, what strategy dynamics characterize such a transition between peer-to-peer -peer and centralized data sharing? Mixed, but most of them fall on harmony. Still successful tra transition is not guaranteed because even though all harmony indices are larger than zero, there are some fit and grid value pairs that fall on defection dynamics and coexisting dynamics and bias stability, which are linked to other equilibria. Causing six Nash equilibria, yes, one of them is the desired outcome, but still not enough because we really want predictability. We really want to predict things. Uh, so we can keep going uh, to, to focus on other uh, uh, um, aspects of the, of the design process. How does allocation of costs and surpluses impact strategy dynamics? Well, optimizing cost allocation to equate harmony indices was more efficient than arbitrary surplus allocation. In general, for cost allocation, uh, I, I went from having six equilibria to just one which happened to be the desired outcome. For surplus allocation, it caused the desired outcome to lose equilibrium status. There's also another result that I don't show here, but is that I also use surplus allocation based on the Shapley value, which is widely regarded as this fair uh, solution concept. And the result was very similar. The equilibria, uh, number of equilibria didn't change much. And I mean, it's still not good enough for having the desired outcome to, to fl flourish. Now I would like to, would like to sum summarize the contributions of my dissertation. For the first uh, objective, modeling of study dynamics. First, identification of study dynamics in engineering design problem. A, a second, the by level of model of decision making to characterize such study dynamics. Third, the modeling of by level parameter design tasks with a specified study dynamics that can be used in human subject experiments. For the observation of, of the effect of study dynamics on design performance, the three contributions were the human subject study to study the effect of the, these dynamics on performance. Second, the observation of strategic behavior in bilevel tasks. The results were consistent, co consistent with existing literature despite having this bilevel feature because in the literature, usually it's a one-shot game. Most of the literature doesn't bother in adding a lower level uh, value map or adding a lower level decision-making process but still the results are very similar. This is the consistency be between engineering design and social uh, uh, science and social uh, 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 systems. Grid was identified as the most inf impactful factor and there is a potential, potential leak uh, between fear and communication. Regarding the study on, on the emergence of strategy dynamics in complex uh, systems design, the contribution is uh, three in three parts. First, the framework to assess such strategy dynamics. Second, the assessment of the impact of allocation costs and surpluses. And third, the study of strategic decision making that can be transferred to adjust, ad adjacent fields of research. For example, mechanism design, which is uh, also called as reverse game theory opportunities for future research. So first, research on human-human and human-computer interaction in design. How? Well, first, let's, let's dream of collective design experiment, uh, experiment 2.0, where a strategic behavior is analyzed with, two, with, with more than two human subjects. Let's uh, also think about protocol and case studies that can be helpful to study strategic decisions in context-specific activities. Let's also consider cognitively inspired computational agents to assist strategic design decision making. For the second opportunity, multi-actor value modeling in game theory, 
The refinement of value-driven methods to assess strategic utility in collective design processes, a platform to test alternative con concepts of equilibrium selection and rationality. I uh, didn't talk a lot about this, but I, I see that the, the way I, I simplified the description of strategy dynamics, having them on a single coordinate system, I see that it can be very helpful we would like to look at other solution concepts and emerging mechanisms. And I also, and, and by now I am aware that there might be a link between this description. Uh, I mean, there might be opportunities for linking this description of, of uh, study dynamics with contemporary economic theory, for example, prospect theory or and the theory of moves. Prospect theory by Kahneman and Tversky, theory of moves by Stephen Brahms. Finally, an opportunity that, that I, I feel is the most exciting one, which is mechanism design for engineering design. First, the structure of incentives to drive collective action in design activities. Second, democratization of design, manufacture and innovation. And this is based, this is a recent paper in the, in the Journal of Mechanical Design uh, by Jiao and, and others that, that talks about how we can make design more open, more uh, collaborative, that includes more design actors, not only the usual designers in their offices, but also the users. So we can use mechanism design for, for and based on this strategy, strategy dynamics, and based on this idea on understanding strategic behavior to study this uh, concept of democratization of design. Finally, design theory and methodology in the emerging field of strategic engineering design. This is still a, a field that has been proposed. It could be a, a new career, we, we don't know, but I see that there's a lot of potential from this work to model the way we teach students how to make better strategic decisions in design. Dissemination of contributions and collaborations. Are, uh, there, were, there are five publications that are tied to this, or expected publications that are tied to this work. Each of them uh, associated with a chapter. Uh, two of them are already published. Also, related to this work and, and taking elements uh, back and forth, some collaborations, uh, like for example, one collaboration with uh, Arki Marshash, another collaboration with, with Dr. Dr. Grogan in, on, a, on a paper on biostability dynamics, an ongoing collaboration with Jordan Stern, also on biostability dynamics on, on a concept of a strategic robustness in bilevel tasks, and are, uh, also a, a, a very nice work uh, with Ashish Shaudari, uh, Jitesh Panchal, Erika Grala, Zoe Shine Farber, and Dr. Grogan on representing knowledge communication structure. And I'm taking Thanks to this work, I had so much inspiration of applying communication structures in design. Acknowledgement, Dr. Groen and the Collective Design Labs, my academic siblings, a National Science Foundation, a Systems Engineering Research Center, and Lockheed Martin Corporation. Thank you so much, and I will take your questions. Thank you very much, Ambrosio. Um, very well done.